Welcome in to Moving the Chains, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside John Epps. Got Jarrell Hendricks back on the board again today. Guys, we're here for our Week Zero South Carolina High School Football Preview Show. John, scrimmages are done. Jamborees are done. We've got real football this week. Yeah, time for the uh, rubber to meet the road, as they say. Yeah, going to be a lot of fun. We had a lot of uh, you know great action last Friday and Saturday across the Palmetto State. Some great matchups. Teams got to learn a lot about themselves. You'll find out throughout the show as we talk about some of these games that maybe I don't put too much stock into some of the Jamborees and scrimmages, but we'll see how that shakes out. But we'll be a lot of fun as always. We'll have our games of the week brought to you by Kona here in a minute. We'll have a, a full statewide breakdown from 5A down to 1A, including the skeezer ranks as well. Go through all that as always. If you guys have questions about your team, thoughts about your team, Feel free to chime in here. Let us know. We'll give it. Uh, give us your thoughts as well. Love to get your feedback. If this is your first time, we really appreciate you. Check us out here on Facebook. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more at Moving Chains, M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S, movingchains.com as our website and our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Do a weekly preview show here on Tuesday nights about 7.15, so tune in for that each and every week. As always, get your Moving the Chains merch. We got great hats, some Richardson hats. We've got some great hoodies for the colder weather. Going to have some T-shirts here soon, too, guys, so be on the lookout for that. Lots of great ways to support the boys, rep the boys, also the, the toboggan as well for when it's cold weather. So definitely get some of that. Will be a, a lot of fun. But, John, let's start off here with our Kona Games of the Week. We've got four great ones, also our Skeezy Game of the Week. Let's start with a low country Midlands matchup. Oceanside Collegiate, the Land Sharks, Coach Wilkes' boys going up to the Midlands, taking on the Irmo Yellow Jackets. This is going to be a, an interesting game to me, John. You know, Oceanside Collegiate, last year's two-way state champs. Irmo made it all the way to the lower state final in 4A. Two teams that return a lot, two really good offensive coaches here. It, it Does it worry you that you, you are still playing you know, a couple class difference here from 3A to 5A? Or what do you think happens here in this ballgame between the two teams? Yeah, I'm not worried about the classification at all. You know, I, I think it's still going to take me a little while to, you know, understand where everybody is in the classifications. Uh, I know, Ir obviously, Irmo is the bigger school, yep. the bigger program. Up in 5A probably, now. Yep. Yeah, 4 to 5A now. Um, probably a little bit more depth. I'm not worried about the classifications, though, because both of these teams are really, really good. Yeah. They're both well coached. They, uh, they both have some good senior leadership mm -hmm. on their team as well. Classification doesn't matter. And I and the more and more we've done this, the less and less I put emphasis on that. Yeah. Oceanside Collegiate quarterback Aiden Manavian, the sophomore is back. Last time we saw him, he was showing out in a state title game, helping them win that as a freshman last year. Playmakers Will Virgilio, Gavin Gaspar are both back on the outside there. Three offensive linemen back for the Land Sharks as well. That's big there, John. Defensively, Sawyer Arnold, 14 sacks last year. Max Mormon back at linebacker in Grayson Freeling. Yes, Monroe's little brother. Four-year starter at safety leads that defense there. On the flip side, Irmo, led by head coach Aaron Brandt. Quarterback A.J. Brandt, receiver Donovan Murph, are just a, a deadly combo. Last year, Brandt had 2,900 passing yards, 45 touchdowns through the air, 1,100 on the ground, 17 more touchdowns on the ground there. They have all five O-linemen back from last year, John. They're a big team. Defensive lineman Jaden Bryant, that's a sophomore there. That's a kid I really like. He's a stud there. Two really good football teams, two teams that one good thing that does come out of, I guess, the way the South Carolina does their non-region matches where it doesn't really matter is you get some really fun games like this. You know, this this game is going to make both teams better in the long run. I think right now, um, just due to the the size and physicality of Irmo, I'm going to lean their way a little bit because of the depth. I think the depth could be a big issue here. Um, they, you know, they, they get going downhill with Brand late in the game, and obviously what he can do with Murph. I think their offense is, is going to score some points there. They might lean on Oceanside a little bit. But I do think Landshark's going to score some points. I think Manavian's going to light it up. He's going to hit Virgilio for a couple TDs. I think this will be a, a fun ball game, a, a, a tight, you know, pretty tight ball game there. I think Irmo at home gets the win in this one. Yeah, I think so too. And, you know, there's nothing against Oceanside. I think they are, you know, again, you talk about had three offensive linemen coming back. I yeah. think they're going to be a very physical team too. I, I think – both teams are going to try to lean on that offensive line and try to take that edge, try to control the game. Because mm -hmm. uh, whoever can control, I think if, if Oceanside's going to try to keep A.J. Brand and that dynamic offense off the field as much as possible, yeah. Yeah. that's going to be a, a good game plan from the Sharks if they can do that. And how you do that, run the ball and shorten the game. Yeah. Um, and I know Irma, hey, 
you got more depth. You're the bigger. You're probably maybe slightly more physical team. So what do you do there? You want to run the ball, wear them down a little bit. You get to the fourth quarter, and then you start maybe pushing those guys around. They're, uh, you know, you got a little bit less depth. I think the difference in this game, though, for me is A.J. Brand and those five offensive linemen. Yeah. You know, he is uh, arguably the best player on the field. Uh, looks like he's going to be at Virginia Tech yeah. next year. Yeah. That's where he's committed. As an athlete, there. not sure, you know, yeah. what yeah. position, um, but as an athlete, yeah. So, I mean, that's awesome, awesome to see that, uh, see him play big-time football next year. But having that good of a player at quarterback coupled with five offensive linemen, too, I mean, that's a really big deal. And it's going to be at W.C. Hawkins Stadium. That's another good game changer. Should be an awesome crowd out there. Um, I know the other team in Irma is pretty doggone good, too. But a lot of excitement around this Irma program this year. One thing that I'm going to mention later on, another one of our games of the week that I want to bring up here as well, Oceanside Collegiate being from that Charleston Low Country area. You know, a couple weeks ago, John, we had Tropical Storm Debbie roll through. And a lot of these programs in that area lost some practices. Uh, you know, and maybe it's not a huge deal. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, some of the guys that we talked to kind of through the Grand Strand, you know, low country area that lost some said, hey, it, it does affect us. Like, because that was probably two or three days they weren't able to practice. I'm not sure what Oceanside's system was. Maybe they were, were able to. I, I don't know. Um, but if you lose a few of those practices a couple weeks out from the season, that could be a factor along with having, a, a you know, a, a decently far trip there too uh, in week zero. So it could play a factor there. I don't know. Should be a great ball game. Two teams that we expect to be there. Thanksgiving weekend, probably in their classes playing ball still. So a fun matchup to open the season. Drill. any comments from the chat on this ball game here? Just anybody we need to go ahead and shout out as we get into the next program or next uh, next ball game. Zach says, regular football is back. Let's go, you know, Big Red Machine ready for a deep run. Yeah, Dadrian, good to see you, man. Hello, Louisville, Adrian. fun ball game this week. Ken says, Big ST, we in here. Let's go. Curtis, what's going on, man? Good to see you as always. Kevron, hey, guys. Yeah, we'll talk to uh, Greg Clegg here one. in a second. Bradley, good to see you here as well, buddy. Ryan, appreciate you being in here, my man. Sean Thurman in the building. Yeah. Hey, they, they are ready for another roll. Appreciate you, boss man. Derek, what's going on, man? Uh, Patriots, fun ball games against Seneca. That'll be a fun one to talk about yeah, here in a little bit as well. Perfect. I don't know if you're muted or not. We can't hear you, Jarrell, there. Uh, but we're going to move down to our second Kona game of the week. A, a fun matchup here, too, because you get another two – Two different parts of the state here, John. You get J.L. Mann, the Patriots, heading down to Graniteville to take all the Midland Valley Mustangs. Uh, two two teams that made deep runs last year again. I believe both teams, I believe, were in the upper state final. I think J.L. Mann in 5A, Midland Valley in 4A there. Should be a fun ball game. J.L. Mann, head coach Scoot Watson. New running back, Ladanian Martin, comes over from Greer. Uh, just uh, just committed to Georgia State a couple weeks ago. He's a really good player there. Receiver, Keyshawn Henderson. Bruton and Whitner at DB, Wyatt Ward, all state linebacker, but they are replacing the quarterback, John. Uh, I believe it's going to be McLeod Darnell. We'll see how that goes this week. But, you know, replacing Ethan Anderson, a guy who had played a lot of football there for Coach Watson, tough to do. On the other side, Midland Valley, new head coach, Brent Dorn, you know, newly named a couple weeks ago. He is an alum. You got to like that there, there for the Mustangs. You lose Trayvon Dunbar, uh, 3,000 yards rushing. That's hard to make it up. But the guy that coming back, Preston McNair, running back, he had a thousand yards as a backup last year. So they were running all over everybody. Correct. Preston Butler is back. Three starters on the offensive line back as well for the Mustangs. Defensively led by Andon Hawkins. I think he was one of the, the top tacklers in the state last year as well, John. This is going to be a really cool game for me. Uh, you know, jail man, lose the quarterback. You lose McClellan out wide. But you got a lot of tools still there. You, you, you retool getting some new guys as well. Get Martin. Millen Valley, you lose a big piece with Dunbar. But you still get a lot of pieces coming back too. Two teams, I think that are that are set for for deep runs as well. Who do you like in this ball game? Yeah, I think these are two really good programs. I think some Millen, Millen Valley and four A, Jail Man five A program. I think uh, both programs are going to do well in each classification. I think Jail. I said on our our uh, season preview show. Mm -hmm. I think Jail Man's going to really upset some people. I know they're <laughs> preseason top ten. I get that, but I think they're going to hurt some people's feelings. Um, in, in upper state this year, around yeah. the state this year. Midland Valley is going to be really good. I like the Patriots in this ball game though, because and we talked about this last year too. I don't think Dunbar got the, the praise. I know he did from us, mm -hmm. but just from statewide, I don't know that Dunbar and even from, from colleges. I, I was surprised more offers didn't come in uh, for him than, than they did. Yeah. I think Midland Valley is going to be very good this year, but I think people that didn't realize it last year are going to realize 
how good Dunbar actually was. Yeah. Um, they got a good running back to fill mm -hmm. his shoes, yep. but boy, they could really lean on him every single game last year. Remember? So they lost the West side to get knocked out of the playoffs last year. That was the 68 to 53 track meet. <laughs> I think it was eight touchdowns for Dunbar yeah. in that one. I believe it I was mean, there. <laughs> That, that's a lot to replace. Yeah. That's a lot to replace. Uh, JL, man, I think losing Anderson's a big deal. Mm -hmm. but I think gaining a running back Ladania Martin is going to be a really, really big deal. I think that's going to help even out, um, even out that loss of quarterback for man. Um, and they were so good last year. They're well coached. Yeah. They're going to figure out that. Had Dutch situation. Fork on the ropes in that upper state title very game. Much. You know, I mean, uh, very much. beat Hillcrest twice last yeah. year. A yeah. Very good Hillcrest team. Uh, JL, man, is going to be very, very good this year. I think they win this game. I think it's going to be another very good competitive ball game. Probably a single digit spread. Maybe a, I say spread final score. Yeah, yeah. You know, probably I'd say a seven to ten point game. I'm going to lean jail man as well. Um, I think it's going to be closer than some than some folks think. I saw in the chat people were, were saying Midland Valley by a ton. Or sorry, jail man by a ton. I think it's going to be a fairly close game. I worry a little bit about Midland Valley's passing offense. You know, they didn't have to do it last year, so we just yeah. you know didn't see much of it. Can they do that this year? Because Coach Watson is a defensive minded guy. You know, he he will find a way to take away your 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 strength. For Midland Valley, it's probably the run game. I think Coach Watson's gonna make you throw it. Can Butler throw the ball? We, we don't know. We didn't see it much last year, so we just don't know. Uh, I like JL man. The, you know, Henderson is a stud playing both ways there, receiver, DB for them. Martin is a really good football player, a guy that's been making waves in the upstates for you know two or three years now. You know, he was a youngster. I think JL man. Wins a close one here. Uh, Drew, any comments from the chat on this ball game or yourself as well? Drill? Is Drill here? Do we lose Drill? <laughs> Do we lose the, the Drill Hendricks <laughs> on the board? There he goes. Drill's grabbing a snack. <laughs> <laughs> Marie said, Jail in by a few tugs. Certainly could happen. Yes, I think we've seen a lot of those kind of predictions there. Middle Valley by three okay. from Vincent. Yeah, that, that that's more of could a happen? score line that I'm thinking a, a tighter ball game. Rolling Middle Valley. Should be a, a fun matchup. Bulldog says, "Jail man, about to hurt some Miller Valley fans." <laughs> hey, they certainly could, man. They're coming in with some some talent. Bradley says they're right, They certainly yeah. are, Bradley. Exactly right. This game is in is down in Midland Valley, though. down in Granville. Yeah, Eric says dangerous passing attack. Yeah, interesting to see what they can do with the new quarterback. I, I know they got the the weapons for him to throw yeah. it to. Can he get it to them? Uh, is going to be the interesting part there. Let's look down now at our our third Kona game of the week. Back to the Midlands here, John. But we're going to see a low country Midlands matchup again. And that's James Island, the Trojans, traveling up to take on Gray Collegiate, the War Eagles, in a, a 5A, 4A matchup there, John. James Island coming off a, a awesome season, 12-1 last year before falling in the playoffs. Gray Collegiate making it all the way to the state title before losing to Oceanside Collegiate there. What do you like in this ball game? Uh, just is who do you who do you lean here early in this one? You know, my initial thought is and I tried to talk myself out of it earlier today because I'm like, I just don't know about that. I'm leaning gray. Um, James Island has been so good last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, that defense has been great. Lights out. Uh, you know, that. but, but, and this is another one where I, I throw out the classifications because gray, I, I go back to gray going to the reservation and nearly beating Gaffney a couple years ago. And I know it's not the same players, but it's the same program. Uh, I know coach Holmes is not there, but, the, the ingredients are, are well in to that program to be very successful and to sustain success um, at a very high level, no matter the classification. I think this is going to be a really good, really good ball game. I'm, I just, and it, I know some people may say this sounds a little crazy. I think Gray's a more well-rounded team here. I think they have got, um, I think they've got better talent across the entire, uh, across the entire football team. And I think it's going to be a really close game, but it, it's going to be one of those games that Gray pulls out late, um, late in the fourth quarter um, from whether it be – I mean, the last game we saw him against, mm -hmm. um, against Strom Thurmond. I, I felt like they won the game on special teams, yeah. uh, on kickoffs. They were incredible defending and returning. They had a fumble recovery on a kickoff. They do all those little things that you have to do to win games like this against a team like James Island. Uh, and I think Gray – Makes a play or two there where James Allen, maybe they don't. James Allen, head coach Jamar McCoy, lost a lot of talent from last year. Wishy Ravenel, Braxton Scott, um, the other Scott kid, a running back there. They do return running back a more Tank Scott, Jalen Brown Singleton is, is a weapon outside, a running back playmaker for them. 
Defensive line is really good. Dalton Woodall is a stud up front for them, along with White, Jefferson, and Baran. Really good kicker as well with Gray Dangerfield, one of the best in the state there. Quarterback, I believe, is going to be Zacoby Riley. I have not heard for sure on that, but I think that's who they're going with there uh, for the Trojans. The great collegiate side, new head coach, D'Angelo Bryan, a guy you mentioned there, you know, is coming up from Silver Bluff, a guy who's won a lot of football games, will do a great job there. Quarterback, Tyler Waller, running back, B.J. Montgomery, receivers, Quentin Stroman, Zoe Grant, Zion Job. What makes a difference for, for great collegiate, you know, especially at the lower levels, and now it's big, they're going to need it here, is that they are pretty big and, and, and deep up front, which you usually didn't see a lot of the 2A yeah. level. 4A, 5A, you're going to see more of that. When And it's a good thing they've got it because they're going to need it. But <laughs> they've got a big offensive line. Defensive line with Singleton and Taylor is really good. Linebacker Michael Bullware. Defensive back Aiden Legger. A lot of names you've heard and you know of because they return a lot from last year's team. They really do. I think that's why I'm going to lean Greg Cleese as well because they're going to be at home. Same thing as earlier. Long trip from James Allen up to Columbia. Sure. Along with, did you miss any practices? Because of Debbie, I don't know that could play a factor there. But I think just breaking in some new pieces for James Allen – um, and along the long, the long road trip, I think Greg Collegiate wins a close one here. Um, this could be maybe my my favorite game on, on Friday night. I'll preface that Friday night could be my favorite game on Friday night this week. Yeah, and you know um, what would be wild if James Island and they, they got a sack schedule. They play somewhere on Fort Dorchester late in the year. Um, it's possible this is James, if James Island drops this game, it could be the only game they drop in the regular season. Um, I Could think be. there is a good chance of that. Um, you know, they're replacing a lot of pieces, but late in the year, they should be click, really clicking. Yep. Uh, but in this game, I like Gray by a little bit. Again, I think this is another, this is going to be a one score ball game where, you know, Gray gets a, a turnover late or, uh, you know, special teams play um, something, you know, uh, small, a small play that turns out to be, or, or not a small play, but, you know, something special teams related or, uh, yeah, you know, along those lines where it makes the difference in the game. And it's one of those two where I think the the location of the game plays a difference. Like I think if, if you're so playing this game down at the backyard at James Island, like you probably lean to the Trojans, but you're going up to Columbia, you're playing great collegiate. Um, I think the War Eagles get a win here. Drill, any comments uh, from the chat or from you on this one? I know we're having some mic issues with you here. Don't know if we got you back or not, but feel free to pop up whatever comments we have as well. Eric said, Eric said BJ Montgomery, a problem. Yeah, he's a problem he's a for everybody. Player. He's a great player. Great player. Chino says, Coach Brunk is off with a big win against James Island. Yeah, I think so, too. Bizarre. Yeah, he's a stud, man. He's I think he, this is his break breakout year, I think, here as a junior. I think he's, you know, he's had some good games. His sophomore freshman year, I think this is the year he really takes the next step for the War Eagles. And he's in a great position to do so. He's gotten a lot of playing time yeah. um, as a young kid. Now he's he'll be well well suited to take on a larger role this year. Yeah. Anything from you, Jarrell? I'm going to guess your mic's still out. Five, four, three, two. Drills Mike is still out. Okay. Let's take a look now at our fourth Kona game of the week, John. And if you heard me there, Drill, do we got you? <laughs> Nothing from Drill. Okay. He's still there. <laughs> if you heard me there, Drill, I, or uh, John and Drill, I guess, I mentioned that was my favorite game on Friday night. Because maybe my favorite game of the weekend might be this one right here. And that is the Barnwell War Horses traveling to take on the Blackfield Hilda Fighting Hawks on Thursday night this is a big time two-way 1a matchup here john i am super excited for this one barnwell led by head coach brian smith quarterback cam austin of south carolina baseball commit really good player there you got peoples and sturkey as playmakers the linebackers are really good with ed thomas and zizit last year john at barnwell blackfield hilda won this ball game 36 34 blackfield hilda is really good again barnwell is really good again who do you like in this matchup I tell you, and this was a 36 to 34 ball game earlier in the year. Um, I think maybe in the second game of the season last year. Uh, I I think Bournemouth is going to get this game just because I, I find it hard to believe anybody, uh, no matter being at one, you know, one A or two A, is going to beat Barnwell two years in a row. That's a great point. Uh, that's a that, great that's, program down there. Yeah. That's my. Expert level uh, analysis on the game. I just don't see Barmore losing this kind of game two years in a row. Um, but Blackfield Hill has been so stinking good, too. They're really good. It's going to be a really good game. As you mentioned, it's going to be uh, at Blackville Hilda, so that's going to make a difference as well. To not have to play at Barnwell is going to be a really big deal. Should be a really, really good ball game. And what a treat to have that game on Thursday night. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure how many Thursday night games we have, but to have that one alone, is a really, really cool way to uh, kickstart it off. 
Blackfield Hill to led by Coach Kevin Jones. They've done a great job. Two years ago, they were two and eight on the yeah. season. Yeah. Last year, you know, they're the last public school team going in the upper state playoffs in one A there. This year, they are, you know, one of the top two or three teams in one A probably sitting there, led by athlete Jaquel Holman, a South Carolina football commit. 1,600 yards last year, 26 touchdowns, and 76 tackles as well. A player I really like plays DB wide receiver, Namir Anderson. He's a stud there. Quarterback Samari Williams, a lot of experience. He's played quarterback for a couple years now. He knows what he's doing there. The worry for me for Blackfoot Hill is offensive line, a little bit undersized. They don't really have that, you know, the big guys you're looking for up front. And you, you, you run into sometimes in 1A and 2A where you have classes where that just happens, where you just don't have the size up front. And that is a worry for them. They do a lot of pulling and they're great at that, but just man on man. It's going to be a, a tough fight there for, for the Hawks. Defensively, Beard and Johnson are good players as well. 12 seniors at Blackfield Hill to, are, are, that are really good players that, that really lead that team. Great leadership from them. But, you know, John, this is a game where I think that both defenses are, are going to play really well. I think both defenses are going to be kind of ahead of the offense, which you see a lot early in the season, it feels yeah. like, in general. Blackfield Hill, I know, had a jamboree last uh, Friday where they shut out a, a pretty good team, a pretty good 4A team. Um, so that defense is looking good for them. Barnwell, year turner coach Smith, I think they're going to be much improved as well. They're one of my favorites in 2A if you heard our show last week. I think this, is, this comes down to the end here. I'm going to lean with Cam Austin making one more play than Blackfield Hilda. I think the Barnwell wins a tight one. Maybe the same score as last year, just flip it. <laughs> this is going to be a fantastic ball game. I think Drill and I are going to go to this game on Thursday night. So if you're down there, definitely say hello to us. Love to meet you guys. It should be a fantastic matchup down there. I'm going Barnwell in a close one. Yeah, I agree. I think Barnwell wins this one. Um, wins a close game here. Should be another great game, though. Uh, you know, nothing leads me to believe that that it's going to be uh, any worse of a game than it was last year in that 36-34 thriller. Yeah. Drill, any comments from the chat on this one? I'm sure we got a few buzzing in there. Or right, Drill, do you have any comments as well? You guys got me now? Yeah. We're back. Drill, let's go. He is I, back. I pulled it. From his bathroom break. Good to have you in here, man. No, I pulled the John Epps. I was sitting in the lobby. I wasn't even in here. So I was just oh, I was in the shadows. It happens sometimes. So pull the John Epps. Hey, let's go all the way back. Give me Irmo, that brand uh, Donovan Murph, you know, combo. Love that. Nasty. Jail, man. Jail, man. They were so close to, to playing for a state title last year. Yeah. Great, great collegiate. I think they're going to start off with the bang. And I'm going to go against you guys here. I think Blackfield Hilda pulls off the upset. Uh, in I like it. I like it. Hey. Marvel there. That is going to be a great atmosphere Thursday. You know, obviously it's a one A school, so you don't have the biggest stadium. It's going to be packed to the gills. I think Thursday night. I mean, that's that's got to be a great feeling for these kids. I know a couple of programs around the state play on Thursday to open the season. I'm glad this is happening this week. That's going to be a lot of fun to really just give us a, a full kickoff for the high school league season here. Maurice and Blackville by three touchdowns. Wow, yeah. Maurice, that's a that's All a heck right. of a prediction there. Boy, those kids are gonna have fun. Michael says fighting guys. Hawks by six. That will be fun as well. Eric says pretty another close game. I think so too, man. I think it's close either way, Eric. Life of oh, about 14. Okay. A lot of fighting hawks picks in here, John. Y'all might know something I don't. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So uh, that's did. all the comments we have on that game. Just so many other comments. If I don't get to you guys, I'm so sorry. We will we will address your teams. We are getting to it, but we are doing our Kona games of the week right now. Yeah, let's roll through our, our final Kona game of the week here. Our skis of the game of the week, John, which is actually a, a cross uh association game here. And that's Christchurch, the Cavaliers, going down to Columbia to play the Hammond Skyhawks. This is a really fun game. You know, Hammond, I'll give them some props. They played some public school teams the last couple of years, and they yeah. played great collegiate a couple of years ago. Um, you know, and, and they are trying to, to mix it up. And, I mean, that's it's really cool to see early in the year. I, I, I enjoy that. Christchurch, back-to-back 1A state champs, now playing 3A football here in the high school league, led by head coach Quinn Hatfield. Quarterback Tucker Hendricks, receivers Jackson Rep and Jude Hall. Michael Martin, the freshman running back, is a kid to watch out for. He'll be a stud here in a couple years. Defensively, Will Margie and Ford Glenn are back as well for them. Hammond, head coach John Weather, seven straight state titles uh, in the skis of land there. Great program there, the Skyhawks have. Quarterback Andrew Turner, running back Manny Johnson, wide receiver Croft. Tight end Mike Tyler committed to LSU over the weekend. So they've got talent there, the Hammond team does for sure. Lot They lost a lot up front on both sides of the ball. Defensively led by linebackers Brewer, Lamont, and Drew McCall. This will be a fun game here, John. Um, I think I want to lean Christchurch. I think just the, the what they're bringing back wants me to, to go with them a little bit. I think, you know, Hendricks um, and, I, and I think Rep have a big game here. Interesting to see the freshman run like how, how he does in his first real test here. But I think I think Christchurch a little too much firepower. I think they win this ballgame, but it should be a fun one down there in Columbia. 
Yeah, I like Christchurchians too. Uh, you know, what gives me a little hesitation is Mike Tyler. I mean, you know, that that's going to be a big time problem to to defend him. Mm -hmm. But hey, it, it's if you're Christchurch, you say, hey, we know that's your best player. We're not going to let you beat him. We're not going to let him beat us. And if yeah. they can do that, I think they win the game. Um, you know, Christchurch is, I know they've been 1A, and but they have thrashed in 1A. Yeah. Uh, this is a really, really good program. Yeah, they played a, a 5A Riverside last year. We're competitive against them. Mm -hmm. They're not scared of anybody. They'll play anybody. Yeah. Um, I, I like Christchurch in this game as well. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Um, two really successful programs there with a lot of talent. Uh, but I lean in Christchurch here. Uh, and, and a you know, I think it's close, but maybe it's not close, Sean. Honestly, I, maybe it's not. If you, if you get, you know, if Hendricks hits rep for two, three touchdowns early on, maybe it gets out of hand. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but Hammond always has great, great ball players down there. They're a really tough squad. You know, they played Gaffney a couple years ago, too. And I believe he held Gaff or lost to Gaffney by maybe a touchdown. It was a fairly was close, close ball game. Um, so we'll see. I think this Hammond team is probably not quite as good as that team was a couple years ago, but maybe, you know, maybe Coach Wheeler does some magic because he is very good at that. Uh, so any comments on that ball game, uh, Drill? Just one. Dedrian <laughs> says Christchurch could beat the Brexit off. Of hey, certainly could happen, Dedrian. They got the firepower to oh, beat yeah. the Brexit off of anybody, it feels like, really. Um, Drill, any comments from you on that one or any comments want to run through as a whole from across the from across the chat we've just seen here as we've gone on this first 25 minutes or so. No, you guys did it well. Love that you guys got Will Margie out of the way. I, I know you guys talked about that, you know, early in the I got the pronunciation data well. right here. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Christchurch is that too much power power. Those guys are old too. You know, they're they're used to used to winning. But Hammond, obviously, they're used to winning as well. So that's a terrible <laughs> Terrible analysis there, but uh, I think Christchurch is, is the better team, and I think they're going to win the game. Uh, but so many comments, man. It is so awesome to be back and so awesome to see how people are excited to see y'all's beautiful faces. We'll just go well. through from the beginning. Daniel used two quarterbacks. You know, and I've heard there's there's Cleary, there's turnip seed. I don't know. Some folks I've asked have said that turnip seed is probably going to be the guy, but then they say Cleary is, is a stud, so maybe you can't keep him off the field. I don't know. I would assume early on you probably do play them both some. I would, you know, if you're if you're Coach Fruster, you, you think that probably by region play you want to have be you know be settled on one guy at that point, but but we'll see. Coach says, let's go Super Bowl. They did look good last week. They did. Uh, you know, surprise me. Not really surprise me. We just didn't know some of the names, but they, they did look good. Sluter Tiger Nation. What's up, Rod? Good to have you in here. Go Swamp Foxes. Hey, they played their night as well, Corey. They play Lakeview up there. That'll be a fun oh, match up fun there. Game. Man is deep and two good DBs. Yeah, yeah Bruton and right. Whitner. They got Whitner. both those guys there. Uh, you're exactly right there, Nathan. I forgot about that, Nathan. Coach Good Bryant, call. big win over James Island. That's what I'm predicting too, Chino. Yep, Cody, press the luck to Coach Bryant there. Timberland's really fast on defense. Don't shoot down Lee Central. Yeah, okay. Timberland's a good team. Desmond Green up front, uh, a big-time prospect. I think a power five guy. Uh, I think he's a junior this year. He's a really good guy to watch. Yeah, exactly right. You're right there, Brian, for sure. <laughs> And the rest, we have um, some other games. We are going down the line now. We got those games of the week out of the way, so we will get to your, your teams. Perfect. Once again, our Kona games of the week, we had Oceanside Collegiate at Irmo, Jail Man at Midland Valley, James Island at Great Collegiate, Barnwell at Blackfell Hilda, and then Christchurch at Hammond. If you missed those, you can always go back and watch them once the show is over. We'll do a quick shout-out to our friends of the program, then we'll start at the 5A ranks and work our way down, John. Drill. Play the music. Need a new ride to get you to the big game? Founders Federal Credit Union has auto loan rates that'll get you in the driver's seat without breaking the bank. And here's the best part. No payment for up to 90 days. Drive to victory with a loan that suits your budget. Visit foundersfcu.com slash auto today and score your dream car with an auto loan from Founders. Terms and conditions apply. Member qualification required. The George Agency has been serving the insurance needs of South Carolina for over 40 years. They're a full-line insurance agency concentrating in employee benefits and health insurance with an office in Mullins and Merle's Inlet, but they can help you all across the state. They have clients in Greer, Rock Hill, Columbia, and more, so wherever you are, they can help. Give Bradley, Wayne, Richard, and the crew a call or check them out online at thegeorgeagency.net. That's thegeorgeagency.net. Okay, we are back, John. Let's start now. With the 5A ranks, we're going to work our way down, guys. As always, throw in your comments on these this slate. Love to hear from you. But, John, let's look at this 5A games here. We'll, we'll give a couple comments as we come to them, but let's knock these out right away. Yeah, and as always, we've got some cross-border games, mm -hmm. um, some South Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia games. Starting in a little border war here, 
Fort Mill will go across the line and play Ballantine Ridge. I've never heard of Ballantine Ridge. Might be a new school. Could be. I know where Ballantine is. Yeah. I've never heard of Ballantine Ridge. Ashley Ridge will go to Berkeley. That's a fun matchup there. Berkeley, a lot of pieces returning. Two receivers, Bash and Boone. Henry Rivers back at quarterback. Ashley Ridge, you got to replace Derek Sally Jr. But I've heard they might be better this year. We'll see. Quarterback Trevor, Trevor Kalees is back. We got a fun, I think that's an offensive shootout there uh, down in Low Country on that's Friday. A really good offense last year. Too. Yeah. Nation Ford will go to Blythewood. Greer will be at Boiling Springs. Boiling Springs had a really good season last year. Um, looking to see if they can uh, continue that momentum. Got a good quarterback. There, I, I know they're Springs. one of Drell's sleepers. I agree with him. Lincoln Husky, really good player. They're slinging that ball. Um, I think uh, Chin as well at running back is back. They've got a chance to make some noise, I feel like, this season. White Knoll will go to Zimp Stadium to play Camden. Uh, on here, it says that they're playing Saturday. Is that right? I'm not sure. I've not confirmed that one. Okay. Um, th that's an interesting matchup. You know, White Knoll, Landon Sharp, one of my favorite players in the state, back at quarterback. Geronimi, the brothers there, both back. They're great players, along with Tyon Fanning. Camden, you lose a ton. You lose Mayrounds. You lose Hickman. You lose Grayson White. You still got JoJo jo Krim back. You're replacing some other guys. You got Wyatt Thompson stepping in at quarterback. I think it takes Camden a couple weeks to get going. I think White Knoll wins this ballgame. I think we're going to see a different looking Camden offense this year. Yeah, uh, I, I know they like where they're at offensively. Uh, they're they're confident and they feel good about it. But I agree with you. It might take a couple weeks. Don't think they're going to beat White Knoll here in week zero. But Camden will still be a good football team mm -hmm. this year. We'll have what uh, they are playing Saturday. Thank you, Quentin. Okay. Appreciate the, the confirmation. confirmation there. Hey, that's great. That's another fun game to get. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you can go to a game Friday and go to that Saturday. Um, Carolina Forest, they will host West Brunswick out of North Carolina. Chapin will be at Catawba Ridge. Interesting game there to me. I like Chapin. Uh, Brady Albro, quarterback's a good player back there uh, for Coach Ryan Cole. Catawba Ridge, 1-9 and nine last year, but I think they're going to be a lot better this year. We'll learn a lot about both those squads like this Friday night. Yeah, I think Catawba Ridge got to bounce back a little bit this year. Ch uh, Clover will host Chambers out of North Carolina. This could be a – this is an interesting ball game here. Greenville now 5A. They will travel over to play Dorman in week zero. That's a pretty uh, – that's a big, big-name matchup now. Ridgeview will go to Fairfield Central. Buford will be at Fort Dorchester. Always a fun game between those two. Um, Buford, what do they have this year? We'll see. Had a, you know, I think they won seven or eight games last year, which is a, a step down from them from what they had in the past couple of years. Fort Dorchester breaking a new quarterback there. Love the running back, Ryan Campbell. He's a stud. I think Fort Dorchester probably a little bit too much firepower at home there. Be interesting to see how Buford – you know what they come out with uh, with this Friday? Yeah, if they've got uh, if, you know, if they can do a little something. I know they lost a lot on offense. Um, they can do a little something. Um, or lost a lot on offense. What was that two years? Yep, ago? yep, two years ago. Um, that that could be a game. That could be a game. Northwestern will go to Huff. That's another North Carolina school. York will be at Indian Land. Hillcrest going to Lawrence. Greg Porter now at Lawrence. Former Hillcrest head coach won a state title there. Year two for Coach Swiger, the Rams. I think they win this ball game. I like what they're doing. Um, I, I honestly think they win this game by a lot. I think so too. Uh, but I am really curious to see um, how that Lawrence program will look on mm -hmm. the Porter. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Tell, yeah, we're not going to tell the week zero. It's, it's a rebuild right. for sure. It'll be a program to watch. We'll have Gilbert going to Lexington. Gilbert, the smaller school, beat Lexington last year uh, early on in the year. Coach game or uh, game one for Coach Ozzy Exume there. A lot of talent back. You got to replace your quarter, but you got Trayvon Williams back. You got Crew Morris back. You got Connor Gooding back. Lexington, we don't know a ton about them yet. They lost a lot too. Tayden Mines is gone. Christian Sexton is gone. Year two for Coach uh, Dustin, <coughs> excuse me, Dustin Curtis there. I think Gilbert might beat him two years in a row. But I don't know. I, I, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. You know what? I'm flipping that. Let's go Lexington. Lexington is at home, right? Um, it, yes. Wildcats at home. I'm going to go Lexington as well, but there's just so many. I admittedly, I, there's so many unknowns for me in mm -hmm. this game. I wouldn't be surprised if Gilbert wins this game, but I yeah. would. I'm leaning Lexington here. Lugolf Elgin will be breaking in the Bowlware era. They will be at Little Richland Friday night. West Ashley will go to Lucy Beckham. Malden hosting Riverside. Lake City will be at Myrtle Beach. North Myrtle Beach will host Goose Creek. Easily will be at Pickens. Spring Valley goes to Richland Northeast. Nice little rivalry game there. Mm -hmm. Rock Hill will be at River Bluff. Wanda goes to Sacristy. Nice rivalry game. Really good rivalry game here. South Florence hosting West Florence. You know, this game, usually 
ends the season, but now with them being in different classes, they got to play at first game of the season. Uh, I know there's some a little bad blood the last couple weeks. Had some some talk back and forth going on between Coach Jennerette's squad and Coach Marlowe's squad. We'll see how that shakes out. You know, Terry Gordon, a, a great player there for West Florence. South Florence has tons of studs back. You lose a lot of pieces, but you got a lot of guys back. Amari Adams, of course. Lee asked about this ball game. Uh, you know, uh, Amari Adams on the defensive side. Offensively, you got all the running backs. You got Raleigh Jett, Zion Gilbert, Trey Leonard, Messiah Jackson. Got a lot of playing time last year. He didn't throw a whole lot, but he, but he was the quarterback last year. I think South Florence at home wins this ball game. I don't think this game's close. Really? I don't think it's close. I, I think this game, probably early third quarter, is going the Bruins way. I think there's just – there's way too much talent on both sides of the ball for South Florence. And West Florence is a good team. Yeah. Uh, they're a bad team. But South Florence is going to – they're going to destroy a lot of people this year. Um, and, and they're going to be able to do it offensively. And if someone shuts down their offense, they're going to be able to do it defensively. Yeah. Um, and we've seen them do – we've seen them do it the last couple of years too. Uh, really, really great program Coach Marlowe has built there. Yeah. I did say Terry Lowry, right? Terry Lowry? Yes. Okay, Terry Lowry. Lowry, yeah. Keyshawn Washington, two guys I like a lot. Uh, now, this is an interesting game. This one stood out to me. Spartanburg going to South Point. Yep. Pretty big ball game there. Uh, Dennis, I I tell you what, I, my initial gut says I think South Point, because South Point, again, there's a lot of unknowns. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet South Point has got more talent than Spartanburg. I think Spartanburg wins the game. A really close game last year from a curriculum between these two teams there. Uh, you know, Spartanburg, two quarterbacks, TJ Johnson, Trey Burke, not sure what they're going with there. Justin Rice, a really good receiver, a Super 75 guy for us. Great linebacking core, Cam Rich Smith. And uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but Cameron Smith is kind of the leader there. Trenton Lynch at running back. Coach Hodges does a phenomenal job, as he always does there. South Point, the worry for me, though, is the quarterback spot right now. You know, Cam McMillan transferred over. He's injured right now. They're going with Jazavian Currents, who plays a lot of DB. He's playing quarterback right now for them. See how that shakes out early on in the year. This game is at South Point, correct? Yes. Man, I'm going to lean South Point as well. I, I think the Stallions probably – you said Spartanburg. I want Spartanburg. Sorry. I'm going to lean South Point in this one. I, I think they really go ground and pound, just run it a ton, run it, run it, run it. I think it's a close game. I think South Point's defense though, gives Spartanburg a lot of problems. Okay. I, I can see that. I think this is going to be another close game. I just – I think Spartanburg – and I love Coach Hodge. I think he does an incredible job, did an awesome job at Chapman when he was there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he is – soon Spartanburg is going to be really, really good. Uh, Mason Hicks forgot about Mason Hicks. Yeah, good call, Dave. Yeah, uh, great player. Probably good chance he'll be the best player on the field uh, in this ball game. Just when I see South Point play in person, and I see it time and time again, uh, there's inconsistency. Yeah, um, sometimes it's within a game, sometimes it's within a season, but there's just some inconsistency. I think Spartanburg is going to be the more consistent team, and I think they're going to be good enough, well coached enough. To be able to pull this one out. Yeah, it just worries me. You know, last year at Spartanburg had such a good defense. You know, you beat Dutch Fork early on. Whatnot. They just could not score the football, yeah. it felt like. Yeah. And I don't know if that's fixed. I hope it is. I don't know, but that's why I'm leaning to South Point, a, a close one here. But it should be a fantastic yeah, matchup. Yeah, it'll be a great game. A lot, we've got a, we're only through 5A, and we got lots of great games all across the state. I mean, there's there's tons of great matchups. Yeah. The Berg by seven says slick. Yep. I like it. I like it. Uh, we got East Side at South Side, a little Greenville County game. Hilton Head Island will be at RB Stall. Somerville goes to Stratford. Lakewood at Sumter. A little Sumter County rivalry game there. Burns goes to TL Hannah. That could be, and I know Burns has lost a lot, and it seems like there's a red arrow next to that program. They could really set the tone for the season with a win against TL Hannah and Anderson. Yeah. Uh, that would be a big, big time um, prop to them to get their season started. New offensive coordinator as well. I should see how much that changes the the, the way they move pieces around there. Uh, I like T.L. Hanna at home. Um, I think, you know, that offense is tough to defend. I think they've got a little bit more, uh, a little, a few more known commodities, I would say, right yeah. now than what Burns has. But yeah. always a fun matchup. Then it says T.L. Hanna will destroy him. It, it could. It, it sounds could. crazy. It sound, To me, it sounds crazy to say somebody's going to destroy Burns. But it could happen. It could happen. Um, we'll have Wade Hampton going to Traveler's Rest. Two new coaches there, Coach Wright and Coach Goodman getting after it. Fun game there in Greenville County. AC Floor goes to Westwood and around and get out. Conway will go to Wilson. Actually, I saw today that game is flipped. It's at Conway now. Not okay. sure the reason, but I saw they had to make a change. Uh, 
they're moving that ball game over to to Conway. Okay. Yep. Any comments else on five A drill? We need to hit. Bucky's about twenty four West Lawrence. <laughs> hey, hey, South Lawrence man, they they love Bucky's. Will's about fourteen over the Stallions. I think that's it for comments on five A games. Perfect. Let's look down to the four A ranks now, John. All right, with four A, we've got Aner going to Aiken. Whale Branch will be at Bluffton. Um, Lancaster will be at Chester. Uh, interesting game there. A, a game that I feel like has been a lot of fun the last couple of years between those two. You know, I think Lancaster took one a couple of years ago. We had a lights issue. The lights turned out one time. <laughs> Chester won a close one as well against them at one point. Had a big comeback, I feel like. Lancaster, the the magical playoff run last year, winning two games in the playoffs after not winning anything, all, or winning one game all season long. Offensive lineman Kevin P going to Georgia Tech. I like R.J. Brown. Plays over. He's a playmaker for them for Coach Surratt. Interesting team to, to see there. And, and then Chester on the flip side is a team that we have heard a lot of good things to salty's in the battle. You know, Trooper Hooper Floyd back at, at quarterback is a stud. Offensive line has been great. Running back has been great. Defense is always solid for Coach Floyd's squad there. That game's going to tell us a lot. I think it's going to tell us more about Lancaster than about Chester. I think we know Chester's good. But this will show us how good is Lancaster, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chester's got the – I think the ceiling is very high for the Cyclones. Uh, you got to win this game, though. Yeah. You got to win this game to kick it off. Now, this is, is going to be a fun one here. Defending state champs, West Side, they're going to go into Georgia and play a Creekside program. Um, if you if you keep up with college football recruiting, you hear Creekside a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of people that come out of Creekside High School. This is a uh, a larger school, and I had it I had it just pulled up here. They are a 5A Georgia team. They went 13 and two last year. This is a big time ball game for uh, West Side to start this game off. We don't really know a whole lot about them because they're in Georgia. <clears throat> Who cares about them? This is going to be a really big game and probably a ton of uh, D1 talent on the field on both sides. Yeah, this is a Saturday matchup, part of the Turf Kings Invitational. The game before they leave the South or sorry, a Georgia and North Carolina school playing before that. So that they will play the nightcap. Might try to go over to Anderson Saturday. We'll see how that shakes out there. But West Side, we know about the talent, man. Cutter Woods, Weaver, Bomar, Richardson. I mean, tons of talent at Livingston everywhere. They're going to be a tough team. I don't know a ton about Creek Shots. I don't know how to predict this one. I really, I really don't know what to say. Uh, but it's always fun to watch West Side. We'll say that. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to be a lot of fun to watch this year too. This is a, this could be a good game. We got Chapman going to Daniel. Two really, really good programs. Mm -hmm. I know uh, we got difference in classifications here, but um, I think Chapman's going to be a little bit better than some people expect. Yeah. But Daniel, again, should be really, really good this year, too. Yeah, I think Daniel wins us about a few scores because uh, I just don't know enough about Chapman yet. We just don't know who those new new pieces are going to be. Um, I, I think Daniel, at home especially, I think they, yeah. they win some fairly easily. We'll have Liberty going to Fountain Inn. I believe this is the first year Fountain Inn's got 12th graders. Yes, first year seniors. Yep. Yeah, a program last year that was a game away from making the playoffs that didn't have seniors on the team. <clears throat> I mean, I think they've got a chance this year to, to be dangerous. Uh, quarterback Sam Holiday is a good player for them. Liberty, though, had a surprisingly good – I think they won seven games last year. They were – I don't I, remember what the number was. I think was it was seven, yeah. Like, hey, they're doing pretty good. They weren't bad. They weren't bad. So it should be a fun matchup. We'll have Colleton County going to Hampton County. My, my mic is trying to <laughs> fly away here. We'll have Dreer going to Keenan. Darlington will be at Lamar. That's a sneaky good football game there, I feel like. This game is on our pick. I mean, I did my picks – earlier today and i flip flopped a few times on this one darlington quarterback jalen augustus a really special player you know year two there for coach johnson he is, is turning that program around he's a great offensive mind for sure so we know they can score points lamar with coach burris year two for him as well tons of talent a, a really good 1a program there zori pierce zoom jackson those guys that's gonna be a, a great matchup uh i think it's in is it in lamar's in darlington I believe that game is – Either way, it's going to be a fantastic matchup there. That's a, a good one to go to if you're in the area. We'll have Crestwood at Manning. Could be a sneaky ball game mm -hmm. there as well. Airport goes to May River. Emerald will be at 96. Um, Powersville going to Seneca. I, I know someone brought up that game or brought up Powersville yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Powersville bounced back this year. I think they have – got Yeah, for sure. Two years ago – they had some really good luck last year. They had some really bad luck. I think they'll bounce back this year. Um, yeah, Elijah Huggins, Kagan Reed, jo uh, Joe Sean Knuckles, Javi Mills. I like that team. You know, we talked to Coach Muster last week. He's really excited about this group. Said, you know, hey, last year we just caught a couple bad breaks and just kind of snowballed on us. I think this year they bounced back with a good season. I think so, too. 
We'll see Silver Bluff going to South Aiken. That's a, a fun one always. It feels like in those two, you know, Javon Edwards, Juju Edwards there at South Aiken puts up huge numbers every single week. I think he does so again this week just because he's, he's that good of a player. Silver Bluff, we'll find out more about them as we move along. Yeah, Coach Hayes got those boys ready. He likes Silver Bluff by a touchdown. I like that pick, Cody. I like it. Um, South Aiken, it comes down to can they stop anybody. They've been able to score points with anybody the last couple of years. Defense could not get it done. Coach Hamilton taking over some more of the defense responsibility this year. I think you see an improvement there. It'll be a fantastic ball game. Should be. We'll have North Augusta. They're going to go to Georgia. They're going to play Thompson High School. And we'll have Palmetto going to Wren. Wren was one of those teams that they had a really tough schedule last year. Were very competitive. I think Wren could be a really good team this I year. I think too. they're really sneaky. Uh, you know, I, I really I wish they had stayed in three A. I like them a lot more than going to four A. But Colton Bagwell, Reese Price, Cam Sanders, lots of talent there. And then on the flip side, Palmetto, Coach Norton, year two for him. What can he instill in that program? It, it was a rebuild. It, it was, but he's got them heading the right direction. Any other comments, Drell, um, in the chat from four A or from anything else so far before we look down to the three A ranks? Aiken shocks Aner says it certainly could happen. You know, the thing with Aner is they play a, a, a different style of offense. You don't see it a whole lot. See how that goes down there. Kendra defense is great. Yeah, Maurice says him as well. Uh, Kendra defense is top notch. Good call there, Cedric. Loaded again. Creek side by seventeen. Dadrian. So De yeah, Dadrian, you are more more dialed okay. in than we are. Right. I don't know a ton about them, um, so it should be fun. Berkeley actually, yeah, Preston, we talked about it a minute ago uh, in the 5A. That thing, I think it's going to be a shootout. Uh, I think both teams are going to score a lot of points. It will be a, a really fun ball game down there. I'm going to actually Ridge in that game. I'm, I'm leading Berkeley. Right. Cody says North Augusta by two. Uh, once again, I don't know a ton about Thompson, so I don't know what to say there. I know usually a pretty good program from what I remember. It should I remember be a fun some, ball yeah, game. I know some some D1 athletes are coming out of Thompson. Yeah. Camden, White, Knoll. Yeah, we broke that one down earlier. Um, I think we both lean White, Knoll here in that one. All right, guys, let's keep rolling. I do want to drill. Uh, did you see the Tracy McGriff comment? I do want to do want to you know mention that to Slick. If you if you see that, if you, you've got that, put that on the screen there. Best player Slick ever saw is Tracy McGriff in '89 at Lancaster. Love the stadium in the hill. Tracy McGriff was a stud. Um, you know, it, it ran like a deer. Great player for Lancaster back in the day. And it is a really cool stadium. Lancaster, Lancaster Memorial Stadium is a really neat place. I grew up going to a lot of ball games there. Really cool place to see a game. And McGriff. Is a, an absolute star. Uh, if anybody who ever played or coached against him, they will tell you the same thing. He was a, a superstar back in the day. But let's look down now at three A ranks. There, John. Starting off, and this is a this is not a three A game you hear, but we've got it this year. Southside Christian will go to Abbeville. Southside mm -hmm. Christian, a three A school. Abbeville now a one A school. That's going to be a really good ball game uh, down in Abbeville. You know, two teams that have played each other maybe two or three years in a row now. And I, I like this matchup a lot. It's always a lot of fun. Um, I think Abbeville, a little too much firepower. You know, Demarcus Leach, Lewis Haddon, those guys are really good. Southside Christian haven't quite found the level of success they had a couple of years ago. They, they've fallen back, uh, taking a step back, I would say. Do you have some talent back here, uh, back for Coach Sonneborn this year? Jack Criswell, Christian Kaiser as well. But I think Abbeville down at Height Stadium wins this one. I think so, too. I think so, too. They'll have a great crowd out there for that one, too. Uh, as people have talked about, Aner at Aiken. Mm -hmm. uh, Hilton Head Christian will go to Battery Creek. Another cool thing you see early in the year is you get some Skiza High School League cross, yeah. you know, cross matchups there, and that's another fun one. I think Hilton Head Christian, I, I don't know. I don't know enough about Battery Creek to make that call. We'll see. Uh, this game I'm probably going to go to on Friday night, Belton Honey Path hosting Broom. Uh, we talked about the media poll in our season preview. Mm -hmm. This is the only – Top 10 matchup within a one classification. So this is going to be a pretty good game. Hopefully a pretty good game here. Yeah, yeah. Courtney says, don't forget about the Bears. Yeah, you know, Marquise Henderson, I mean, one of the better players in the state. The Clemson commit at running back as an electric playmaker and get the ball, kept receiving it, running it, whatever. He's a, a stud. Um, do you have to replace a few pieces around him? I think BHP wins this ball game. It was cool. Got to meet Courtney last year um, at that Upper State Championship game. Such a heartbreaker for those BHP fans. I think they. I, th I don't think Courtney's the only one who's been thinking about that game all summer, and I think they're going to use that as motivation. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Blackson's got that somewhere up on the board in the in the workout room. I'm sure. <laughs> Down in the Low Country, we'll have Walkamaw going to Carver's Bay. We'll have Woodruff, Woodruff at Clinton. I'm talking about both those games for a second. Walkamaw Carver's Bay. Carver's Bay is a team I've got my eye on uh, to possibly make some noise in one A this year. Had a really down year last year. We'll see what happens there. And the Woodruff Cl Clinton, an old school rivalry there. Two, you know, two hard nosed fan bases football teams. Coach Sloan in year two for Woodruff there. Coach Fountain has done a fantastic job at Clinton there. 
I think the Red Devils on the road, I think they win this ballgame. I like the quarterback. I like Sean Richardson a ton there for them. We'll find out more about Woodruff after this week, but I think Clinton wins this ballgame. I think so, too. And, uh, hey, this will be the healthiest they've been in a long time. Yeah, here yeah. With zero. Uh, I think the Red Devils win this one, too. Woodruff, though, could be a good season for them. Yeah. Um, they, they had some momentum last year as well. We'll see Saluda going to Crescent. Uh, Dylan will host Scotland out of North Carolina. Yeah, Dylan's still breaking to the new quarterback, Ramon Chandler. They had a really good showing in the Jamboree last Friday. I think Dylan, uh, if they can just make sure get, they get that quarterback spot settled, they're going to be you know, a dangerous, dangerous team. Anthony Berry takes okay. Scotland. See, I, I don't know a ton about Scotland. I, think I, I don't follow the guys outside of our state a ton, so I don't know much yeah. about Scotland. So I'm kind of trusting you there, Anthony. I, I don't know much about them. Yeah, I don't know if that's a, if that's a much bigger school or not. I know it's the – I believe it's the whole county. Um I think it's Scotland County, yeah, yeah. The, the whole county. But um, Grand Dylan outside of Latta, yeah. There. Also, apologies, Clinton at home. Yeah, sorry about that, Zach. Y'all know why I said on the right. Yeah, Clinton at home. One of our pick'em games of the week: Philip Simmons at Hanahan. It's gonna be a good game. This is another one I had a tough time picking as well. Same, same, same. You know, both teams lost a ton on the ground. You lose Kayvon Rivera there at uh, at Hanahan. Philip Simmons, I believe, I believe, lost their top two backs, Asbury, and I want to say maybe it's Richardson. I can't remember the other guy. Remember Williams. They lost Asbury and the other guy. Oriana's back at quarterback for them. I like that. Hip is still back at Hanahan along with Drew Goldsmith out wide. I think Hanahan wins a close one here. That, that that could be a maybe one of the better games down in the low country this weekend. Certainly could be. Certainly could be. Georgetown will be at King Street. Marlboro County will go to Lake Merrigan. Year one or game one for Coach Corey Johnson there. I think he starts off with a win for the Bulldogs. Big win, probably. Yeah, it would be. Walhalla will go to Landrum. Then we'll see Swansea at Mid Carolina. The this game is going an interesting one. You may never have heard either of these names, but Atlantic Collegiate will be at Mountain View Prep. Yep. Uh, Mountain View Prep, one of the newer school or new school in Spartanburg County. I think they're going to be really good. Atlantic Collegiate's first year playing varsity football, MVP's first year playing any kind of football. <laughs> it is varsity there. Actually playing this game at Presbyterian College as well. It's That's Saturday. Cool. I want to say 6.30 on Saturday. I Honestly, I've heard a lot of, a lot about MVP. A lot. I know a lot of their players, McGill, Drummond, Hainsworth, yada, yada, yada. I don't know much of anything about Atlantic Collegiate, which is a little odd, I feel like. I think MVP wins this ballgame and gets off to the, the Coach Gray Ramsey area, one, or Gray Ramsey era 1-0. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be a fun team to watch this yeah. year. We'll see Union going to Newberry. Orangeburg Wilkinson will be hosting. Uh, I believe it's a private school, Anderson, like Anderson. Cowboys. I believe so, but not not a skis a private school. I think just some other kind of okay. Yeah, because I, I don't know if that's Anderson Christian or not. Mm -hmm. um, Chesney will be at Pendleton. We'll see Cardinal Newman going to St. Joseph's. Mm -hmm. um, so Cardinal Newman, a good skis a school, but again, we have cross. Uh, Skis a yep. South Carolina, High, South Carolina High School League matching up in that ball game. West Oak will host Thornwell. I believe that's a charter school. Am I right? I believe Thornwell is not playing football this year. So I think okay. that game is off the schedule. All right. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have our um, little bit of a game of the week we have here, Kev. Yeah. HTC hometown connection game. That's Green Sea Floyd traveling to Lore to take on the Lions. A fun Ori County game there. Green Sea Floyd's year two with Coach Patrick Martin. Uh, a lot of pieces to, to replace there. He's got a very, very young football team. Freshman Jack Shelley playing quarterback there. Thomas Gunnels will also get some time for them. Running back Judah Lee. Running back DT Isaac Hewitt. On the lower side, you guys heard me talk last week how high I am on lower. I think the Lions are going to be a very good team for Coach Mance there. Can't wait to see that region get rolling. Quarterback Moon Gerald, an athletic dual threat. Wide receiver Jacoby and Lewis, he's 6'3", a big target out wide. Also, Quantez Dyson, Zamir Herring can, can stretch the field there. Three offensive linemen are back. Seven starters back on defense. Defensive linemen, Javon Johnson and Demaria Thurman are two great players there. A fun, fun game in Horry County for us. I like Lewis. I think it's probably not that close, honestly, John. I like the Lions a lot in our HTC hometown connection game this week. Yeah, and, you know, the only thing is – Loris has got all this Kevin Thomas pressure on them now to perform this season. Let's see if they, the jinx. <laughs> let's see if they can get done in week zero. I, I, I believe in them as well. Yeah, as you see there, HTC, this is live. Connect with it. Check them out. I have a cool graphic tomorrow for that ball game there. Um, and our HTC game each week is going to be a game that involves a team from either Georgetown, Marion, or Horry County. So be on the lookout for that. Send us your nominees if you want to as well. Drill, any comments on 3A from you? Any comments on you know any class from you or from the chat? 
any comments on our HTC game, feel free to hop in with whatever you want. MVP by a landslide. I agree with you there, Daydream. I think so too. We, we'll probably say that a lot this year, Daydream. <laughs> Dylan's going to surprise the people this year. They're not worried the quarterback. Malik, hey, that's a good point. I'm looking forward to it. That's looking forward point. to it. According to y'all, y'all to the Bears down. I think John's definitely I going. We'll see who decides that. Yeah. Let's see. I think that's it for 3A comments. Uh, but yeah, that Loris Green Sea game. Um, so happy to have HTC on board with us this year. But I, I'm leaning with you, Kev. I think it's it's gonna be uh not very close. Uh Loris is just too strong. And I was I was looking through, you know, the previews, you know, for that particular team, and I they're stacked in all three yeah. phases. Um, I know, you know, Coach Mance is really, really excited about that team. And in Green Sea, I feel like it's in a little bit of a rebuild right now. They're trying to get going. And you don't want to be breaking in a freshman quarterback against a team of Loris's caliber. So could be could be a rough start for Green Sea, but hopefully they build on what they're working on last season. It's called Perfect. a learning experience that builds character. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, Drew, let's get a, a shout out to some of my friends of the program. Then we'll look down to the 2A, 1A, and Skeezer ranks. At HTC, we're here to keep you connected. Here to provide reliable fiber optic internet. With free, fast, and secure HTC Smart Wi-Fi. HTC, here to connect. Put founders in the game and win big with our great rates. Whether you're looking for a loan or want to grow your money with a certificate, Founders Federal Credit Union can help you move the chains on your financial goals. Not a member? No problem. Visit foundersfcu.com to see if you qualify. Federally insured by NCUA. Membership qualification required. Equal housing lender. Terms and conditions apply. John, let's look down to the 2A ranks now. Starting with Bamberg Earhart. They get their season started hosting Edisto. Where Shoals will go to Blacksburg. We'll see uh, Buford hosting the South Carolina Spartans. I'm not sure what that school is. Not a high school league school. Not a skis school. I don't <laughs> Somewhere here. I don't think it's USC Upstate. No, I hope not. <laughs> they, they don't play football either. Could be a tough game. Well, maybe they do now. <laughs> we'll see uh, Cross at Burke. Big Cross. MacV will go to Shraw. We've talked big about Shraw. Yeah, so what the Braves can do this year. Yeah, yeah. Interesting to see how 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 they come out early. Uh, are those did, did, didn't have a great showing score wise at Jambri last week. Still, they may be a great football team. Well, uh, this is a good Columbia game. Uh, C. A. Johnson at Columbia. Yeah, we'll see. Skipping down, a lot of these are repeats, so not don't want to repeat uh, for you. Chesterfield will be at Johnsonville. Fun game there. Year one for Coach Matt Quinn, bringing his system there to the Rams. Johnsonville back-to-back -back lower state state titles. But you, you, you replace a lot there at Johnsonville. You really do. But Coach Cribb, it's just a machine there at this point. You feel like uh, it should be a fun matchup there, I think, between the Rams and the Flashes. Yeah. Uh, we'll see Marion at Lakeview. Good PD game Thursday there. night matchup there, too. Uh, Timberland will be at least central. I know I uh, had some comments on that yep. game earlier. We believe Timberland in that one. Uh, Central will be at Louisville. Louisville, I believe most schools bringing in a new head coach. Yes, yes. So Tr Coach Trent Usher at Louisville, actually a Central alum. Right. Uh, coach Jonathan Easton at Central, also a Central alum. They played together, I believe. <laughs> Funny story, this game was going to be at Louisville, um, and then they moved it to, to Central Pageland, and now they're moving it to Buford. Yeah, on okay. Thursday. Yeah, so Daedra's all over. I, I believe uh, – Pageland had uh, some army worms eat up their field, oh, no. which are dangerous because I had some in my backyard the other day. I, I had to put stuff out for so Hopefully my yard doesn't get that bad. But just a, a wild ride there for them moving this game around. Now at Buford on a Thursday. Sorry for Coach Easton and year one, game one. I think Coach Usher and the Lions roll. Okay. I And I know they've lost some talent, but still a really good program. Um, see how it is. It, it's going to be a away game for both teams, I guess. <laughs> Here you, Dejan. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, he is a legend. You're right. State title right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. Uh, Strom Thurmond goes to McCormick. The Rebels, I mean, I mean, they reloaded. You got a lot of new faces there, but they still got talent. Uh, yeah, Strom Thurmond, about 50, says Maurice. That's going to be a, a fun ball game. McCormick has had some some up and down years the last couple of years. I, I don't think they're super, super talented this year. I think Strom Thurmond wins by a lot. Coach yeah. Webb has the boys rolling. That's a, that's a program now. I think they're, they're going to be there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's good to see them good again. Yep. We'll see uh Swansea at mid Carolina. Game one for Coach Fox. It's Swansea there. Um, can he get a, a win in week zero? I think he does. 
We'll see a military magnet hosting academic magnet. Hemingway will be at Mullins. I think Mullins gets their first win in two seasons. Ooh. I think they beat Hemingway. Okay. All right. That'll be not that one another to start of the year. Be a yeah. big, big deal. Emerald will go to 96. Great Falls goes to North Central. Game one for Savelle Newton. See how That's that right. shakes out. Interesting to see, you know, what he has instilled into the program, how much new, you know, talent, new players he's gotten to come out and play for them. We have a fun team to follow this season, I feel yeah, like. North Central's been competitive. Yeah, there. Coach Sisk down there does a good job. Yeah. yeah. We'll see uh, American leadership. They will play a road game against PAC. I don't know who that is. I don't know either. That I think it's Providence Athletic. I think I saw that. I think okay. they're out of Georgia, North Carolina. I, I don't know. Uh, year one of varsity football for Coach Bacon there with American leadership. Um, we'll see how that game goes. I don't know anything about PAC. Never heard of the guys. All right. We'll, we'll see what happens right there. Chesney will go to Pendleton. East Clarendon is at Scotts Branch, and to round out 2A, Pillion will go to Williston Elko. Perfect. Any other 2A comments there, Drew? If we look down at the 1A slate, don't sleep on McCormick, says Terrell. Hey, all right. They could be better than I think for sure. You know, I know they've had the Durants come through there. They've had a lot of really good talent the last few years. Uh, we'll see what happens this season for sure. Or Central by oh, 21, okay. says Adrian. Okay. You're, you're more probably more tuned into that than we are. So I, I trust you on that. That's all I got here. I'm just disappointed in you guys um, not having any commentary on the military magnet, academic magnet game. The magnet Bowl. Just going to leave it at that. <laughs> I believe academic magnet had a good season last year. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> that was my memory gets worse and worse. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look down at 1A now, John. We'll see uh, Hardyville go to Bethune Bowman. I believe this is the first game back is Hardyville as a split school from, from you know, okay. was original Hardyville for years. They have now split again. I believe this is the first year of that. Okay. Because it was original in Hardyville. Right? Yes. Correct. Correct. Okay. Where Shoals be at Blacksburg? Um, uh, welcome all at Carver's Bay. We'll see Rich Spring Mineta going to Dixie. Latta will go across the state line. They will go to East Columbus to play their first game. Calhoun Falls goes to Greenwood Christian. Hannah Pamplico hosting Heathwood Hall, another cross game there as well. A fun matchup. You know, I really like Hannah Pamplico. That offense with, with Poston and Williams are, are really talented players there for them. Heathwood Hall, game one for Coach Timer Zimmerman. A lot of talent back for them. Patrick Bell at quarterback there. Onus Conan Banny, a, a defensive back stub that plays some receiver too for them. Really a fun matchup. I, I think Hannah Pamplico, I like the run game with Williams a little bit. I think they win this ball game. We'll see Allendale Fairfax going to 100 Karen Tyler. Yeah, HKT. I've heard a lot of talk about them in the last couple weeks. A lot of folks are saying, "Hey, we don't talk. We don't talk enough about HKT, John. We okay. got to get on that. Got to okay. get on that." Right. I think they win this ball game. HKT is a team that just like a lot of these one A programs. You have up years, you have down years. It's hard to build because yeah. you just don't know what you're going to have come through the halls those years. I think they do win this ball game at home. I'm gonna go Allendale Fairfax. Okay, I like it. We'll see uh, Timberland going to Lee Central. Mm -hmm. We'll have Hemingway at Mullins, East Clarendon at Scotch Branch. Denmark Olar at Wagner Sally. Now that's a fun game there. I like that one. Um, the Vikings and the War Eagles getting after it. You know, game one for Coach Gillespie there for Wagner Sally. Kind of bringing in some new offensive styles there. Denmark Olar has had a lot of talent the last couple of years. Just hadn't been able to put together a full season, you feel like. That's be a really fun 1A ball game on Friday. Yeah. And, and even though Denmark Olar has been another program where you, you, nobody can sleep on, they, they'll come up and bite you. Uh, They've, they've had some big games yeah. the last couple of years, big wins, yeah. I should say. And then to round out uh, 1A in the week zero slate, we Branchville at Whitmire. Yeah, and, and 1A, of course, guys, we had a lot of games we've already mentioned, uh, you know, like a Darlington Lamar, a Chesterfield, uh, Johnsonville, Marion, Lakeview. We mentioned those earlier on. Southside a, Christian, Abbeville. going to be a really one. fun, really fun 1A slate here in week zero for sure. Any comments, Sarah Jarrell, on, on the 1A before we look down at the skis? Put on as a freshman quarterback. I believe that's Jace Grass. Is that correct? Correct-wise guy there. Okay. Um, Abijah Webb out wide as a stud receiver. They'll be a fun day. They put up a ton of points lately, for sure, at Pendleton House. Yeah, yeah, they had great offense last Terrence year. Terrence says, Jim over Wagner. Hey, I they've agree. got some talent. they got some talent. Nathan says, refer to 1A as the run road division all year. Well, <laughs> hey, well, that could be. There are a lot of good teams <laughs> in 1A, um, Nathan. We'll see how it shakes out. But I, it's hard not to have Abbeville as the favorite yeah. right now. I think everybody would, would agree with that. Anything else, Jarrell? Demwart making a nice playoff run. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, remember. Perfect. Yeah, that is all I have. I did want to give you guys some some updates. Uh, 
the running back you were thinking about at Philip Simmons, Sherrod Williams, also a thousand yard rusher last yes. year. Yes. Uh, and then Onus Conan Banny. I hope I said that right. I've struggled every time. We're working he's on it. A, he's making a commitment on Friday. I think he's between Tennessee and Florida State. So that'll be uh be huge for that program. I'm interested how the cool timing works out. Is it gonna be like, you know, at school at lunch and you get up and go play the ball game afterwards? Like what's gonna happen there? Huh. Half time. Not really sure. On the field. Yeah, another 1A game, obviously, Black for the Hill to Barma, one of our Kona games of the week. We broke that one down earlier on in the show. That'll be a fantastic matchup on Thursday night that I believe we will we will be at. Uh, let's take a quick look at, here at the Skeezer ranks, John. we got Jefferson Davis playing cross. We mentioned Heathwood Hall, Hannah Pampico, of course. We've got Calhoun Falls Charter, Greenwood Christian Mitch mentioned that one as well. Dorchester Academy, Andrew Jackson Academy, Northwood Academy, Pinewood Prep, Lawrence Academy, Newberry Academy, Patrick Henry in Academic Magnet, Oh, excuse me, that's not correct there. Northside Christian Calhoun Academy, Orangeburg Prep, Wilson Hall, Lee Academy, Academy against Christian Academy, Orangeburg Prep, and Wilson Hall again. Uh, Somebody needs to update these scores here because we're all over the place. We got Williamsburg, Thomas Sumter, Dylan Christian, Florence Christian, Porter Gowd, First Baptist, Clarendon Hall, Spartanburg Christian, Richard Wynn, Oakwood Prep, Bethesda, Thomas Hayward, Carolina Academy, Faith Christian, St. Andrews, Hilton Head Prep. A couple notes here on some of the skis of ball games, John. Lawrence Academy and Newberry Academy are playing at Newberry College this weekend. That'll be a, a okay, fun cool. matchup there. Lawrence Academy, big win over Cambridge last week. Spires, McCameron, two touchdowns. They've got a good rushing attack with McCameron, Hardy, and Murphy. Good team there. The Lawrence Academy squad is. Richard Wynn at Oakbrook Prep. They lost six seniors last year. Last year, Richard Wynn did, according, uh, including Drew Spires, a guy that was our player of the week. Had a, a, you know, a huge year for them. Probably be more run focused this year. We'll see how that shakes out for him. Oakbrook Prep, first game for head coach Chad Deal there, former Clemson yeah. and Burn standout. Interesting to see how what he can do there. We know they'll be probably if they're like Coach Deal, they'll be disciplined and tough. So we'll see how that shakes out there. Northwood at Pinewood Prep, Northwood Academy already two and zero. Skeezy can play earlier. They're already two and zero this year. But they do take a step up in competition this week. Pinewood Prep one and zero. Also, Wyndham looked good last week. Receiver Stallworth and Alexander, running back Jeremiah Singleton. Linebacker Connor White, defensive lineman JT King is a really good player there for Coach Holloman's squad. That'll be a fantastic skis and matchup down there in the low country. We got Trinity at PD. Have not played in a couple of years because of different classes. They're a little bit closer this year. They play over at PD. Trinity Collegiate offensive line should be a strength. James Herbert's a good player. Young quarterback Kate Amell, I believe, will be a freshman or maybe he's an eighth grader. I can't remember what he is. He is a super young quarterback, but a good player for them. PD, quarterback Colby Richardson, running back Tristan Heckman, receivers Trussell and Rogers. O line should be good as well. All those guys play defense, as you see a lot of these lower levels, along with Martin and Small, who are key pieces too. This will be a really fun game in the trenches, I feel like. Both teams have a, a, a lot of returning guys up front on both sides of the ball. That'll be fun. Interesting to see what Coach Davis does with the Eagles' defense there going up against a young quarterback. Do you blitz him? Do you sit back? What do you do? I'm sure he'll have something good cooked up there. This will be a, a really cool, interesting non-region matchup. I think it makes both teams better down the line. Will be a fun one there over at the lawn. And then Orangeburg Prep. At Wilson Hall, Arnsburg Prep, year two for Don Shelley. Hart Wiles leads that group on offensive line, defensive line, 49 tackles, six sacks last year. I mentioned Tilden Riley last week at ECU offer already. He's a he's a tight end type player there for them. Wilson Hall head coach Adam Directly Jarecki last year, court, uh, linebacker Jackson Bonzer, 102 tackles, eight tackles for loss. Really good player for that one there. Any comments on Skeezer from you guys or any thoughts or certain games you want me to ask about? What do we got here? Terrell says Lawrence Academy over Newberry. I think so too. I think you're right about that one. That is all the skis of comments we have. Skis of people, I mean, they're already in season, but not in mid-season form in the comments yet. You know, maybe next week we flip, we'll go skis of first, and we work, work our way down to five. I know it's a long time to hang out. I feel sorry for you guys, but I appreciate you guys watching us. That means a lot for sure for this long. But, Drew, let's uh, run to the program right quick, and then we'll uh, kind of go through the last part of the show here. Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates, Kona, offers the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. Three convenient locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville. Go to Kona.care to learn more. 
Ready to find your home field advantage? At Founders Federal Credit Union, we offer competitive rates to tackle buying a dream home with ease. Our team will coach you through every step. Plus, we never charge private mortgage insurance. Don't fumble your chance at home ownership. Start your journey with Founders. Visit foundersfcu.com slash mortgage today. Terms and conditions apply. Member qualification required. Equal housing lender, institution, and MLS. Identifier number 41064. Man, this has been a, a fun week zero show, guys. You know, we'll be back next Tuesday about 7.15 doing the same thing for week one. will be a, a lot of fun. Uh, and we'll have more content, content next week. We'll have our teams of the week brought to you by Preferred Home Services. We'll have our players of the week from the Georgia Agency, our pick We'll have some scores from that brought to you by Hand Engineering. If you haven't done the pick yet, get in on that. It's on our social pages. It's on our website. Go join that. It's a lot of fun to do. Definitely be a, a part of that. As always, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Like, share comment subscribe tell your friends help us grow this thing please definitely like and share the pages not just the the post the whole page on all of our platforms facebook twitter instagram youtube and more at moving chains movingchains.com podcast on spotify apple wherever you get your podcast we're everywhere moving change brought to you by founders federal credit union as always get your merch we got hats we got toboggans we got uh hoodies we got a lot of really good stuff it's all posted on our social pages as well go check that out get some merch support the boys help us Make this bigger and better and go to more games. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, John, any final thoughts from you? Final notes from you, Jarrell, as well? Anything else you guys want to hit on before we kind of wrap up here for the week? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that West Side, Creekside, yeah. Georgia game. We talked about Creekside being a really good program. Creekside, they also have a four-star wide receiver, 12th grader on their team. Uh, he's gotten a ton of offers, gotten a ton, an offer from the Gamecocks. Uh, South Carolina not in his top five, but fact remains – it's going to be a lot of athletes on that football field. Could be a lot of points, too. Yeah, that'll be fun. Anything from you, Drell? Uh, final comments here. I oh, just want to steal one of John's famous lines. Toe meets leather this week, man. Hey. Toe meets leather. Pretty excited about that. Getting started. Got games Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, so that's pretty exciting. There's no excuse not to head out to a football game this weekend. Sure. No no college, no pros. It's Great weather, too. Great, Great weather. weather. Fall Not like wood. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, but yeah, it should be great weather across the state. So no excuse to not get out and support your local, you know, high school, uh, you know, and uh, help them raise some money and, and show out for the community there. Yeah, will be a lot of fun for sure. As always, if you mention if you miss part of the show, it will live on our social pages on YouTube afterwards. You can go back and watch it. Our corner games the week at the beginning had five great ball games there, all the way five eight down through skis. Definitely go check that out. And hopefully you guys tune in next week. You know, we're just getting going here. We had a lot of lot of viewers. The number was looked great awesome. to see. Really cool. So hopefully we get, keep getting bigger and bigger. So definitely, definitely tune in again next week. We'll have our recap show come out this weekend. Well, like I mentioned, we've got our pick them going. We'll have a bunch of other stuff coming out uh, along with some other interviews we've had with coaches that have just been kind of sitting on the computer and need to post. So I'll get those out there for you guys too. But for Jarrell Hendricks on the board, for John Epps, I'm Kevin Thomas. This has been our week zero preview show here on Moving the Chains. And we will talk to you guys next week. Get ready for the ultimate South Carolina high school football experience with Moving the Chains. From previews to recaps, we've got you covered. Dive into our expert preview shows, predicting winners and sharing insights. Then join us post-game for the thrilling recaps, exclusive interviews, and highlights you won't find anywhere else. Plus, connect with fellow fans on our Friday night spaces on Twitter slash X. No one covers South Carolina high school football like us. Join us at Moving Chains on all social media platforms and visit movingchains.com today. Woo. <sighs>